problem with being a YouTube creator is that you're often asked questions that you don't feel comfortable answering for whatever reason. And the problem is the more you avoid answering those questions, the more those questions are asked until it reaches a point where you really just can't avoid it anymore. Now I've had the Interceptor for about two and a half months and I actually ordered some accessories for it prior to it arriving. And as usual, I did a lot of research before biting the bullet and putting my money down on anything. Among those accessories were three genuine Royal Enfield accessories, the long fly screen, the engine bars and the sump guard. And it's the sump guard that's been causing me some problems. I'd originally intended fitting it fairly early on, but I kept getting these questions thrown at me about another sump guard on the market from a UK retailer that was better in every way than the Royal Enfield sump guard and why wasn't I fitting that one? Now, as my way of trying to progress on YouTube, I've always had a strict policy of presenting what I I consider to be the best products I can get my hands on rather than just showcasing what's offered to me or what I can get for free. Products that I really believe in and that hand on heart I can recommend without having any concerns. And one of the things that I have to take into account with this channel, especially with the Interceptor, is the growing number of Indian viewers. Now, I've never been to India, but from what I can gather, there are some very nasty roads in that country. And that some of the Indian viewers that watch this channel frequently have to negotiate large expanses of totally unpaved roads having to contend with very deep potholes, rocks, stones, the kind of environment where a good, solid, purpose-built sump guard is a necessity. And the sump guard that I keep getting thrown at me, I'm afraid doesn't fit into that category. For a start, it wasn't designed for the Interceptor. It's a copy of a product that was designed by Triumph over a decade ago to be fitted to the air cool Bonnevilles. And Triumph themselves never sold it as a serious sump guard. It was more a fashion accessory than anything else. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but I can't recommend an accessory like that to the Indian view viewers knowing full well that it's not fit for the purposes they require it for. Now I don't want to get too stuck on this subject because I need to show you how to fit the Royal Enfield sump guard. But here are the main points, my reason for not choosing that particular third party or aftermarket sump guard. On the original Triumph version it relied on two clamps to hold it onto the frame at the rear of the sump guard. Now this is not ideal. It's basically a friction fit, which means if it got banged hard enough, those clamps were capable of sliding backwards. There's enough flexibility in that sump guard to allow that to happen because it is just a flat plate that's been bent. No other rigidity has been built into it. Now, the saving grace for Triumph is that it had a proper bracket at the front, which limited this movement, but it was a compromise. Now, the version that's been offered for the Interceptor doesn't have the ability ability to securely fasten it at the front via that bracket. So this version has another set of clamps on the down tubes of the engine cradle, making the whole thing a friction fit, a compromise on top of a compromise. This bike with rider is going to weigh over a quarter of a ton. And this particular configuration with a quarter of a ton weight on it, if you do bash that bash plate, is going to allow it to move up rather than back. And my personal view is that there's gonna be enough movement available there for it to actually damage the oil filter that it's purported to protect. And this is another thing that constantly gets thrown at me. This version is higher than the Royal Enfield version, so it protects the oil filter more completely. A statement which completely ignores the obvious. The maker has drilled four very large holes in the front of this sump plate, two of which sit directly in front of the oil filter, leaving it totally open to damage. In fact, although the Royal Enfield sump guard does sit lower, 
it actually provides more protection than this third party version. Now I could continue, but I'll just bring to your attention one last thing. One thing that again keeps being thrown at me, and that is that you can carry out an oil and filter change without removing this sump guard by just removing the front two bolts, allowing it to hang down, and then allowing the oil to pour out of the engine all over the sump guard, over the sides of it, and into a drip tray. And when I hear this, it's almost like that story that we heard as a kid about the Emperor's new clothes. Yes, you save 10 minutes faffing about with those clamps at the back so that you don't have to take the sump guard off. But that oil is going to go everywhere. And it doesn't take a genius to work out that those 10 minutes saved are going to create about 20 minutes, maybe even more, cleanup time, wiping the oil spill up from the inside of your sump guard and probably your garage floor. Now, as I've said, this sump guard, even for the bike that it was originally designed to fit, was a compromise, and Triumph ditched that compromise four years ago and replaced it with something that was more sensible and capable of doing the job. Now, people keep asking me my opinion. That's my opinion. Let that be the end of it. Those are my reasons for not fitting it and instead fitting the Royal Enfield sump guard. Let's get on. Now the RE sump guard comes in the usual Royal Enfield packaging. Plain brown cardboard box with Royal Enfield stamped on it and a collection of parts inside wrapped up in bubble wrap. Now I didn't actually pay full attention when I originally received this. I didn't check the box properly so I, I don't know whether it had previously been opened or not. But I did actually find that there was some washers missing from my kit. The bag was torn open and there were only two washers rather than four washers as it states there should be on the instructions. The instructions of course being the usual Royal Enfield instructions that require a microscope to be able to read them. I do wish Royal Enfield would just use a normal A4 set of instructions like everybody else. My eyesight isn't what it used to be. Now this kit is actually very similar to the kit that comes with the Moton Customs Defender that I showed you last week, although the quality doesn't come anywhere close. Having said that, the quality is acceptable. I seem to remember I paid £60 for this sump guard and I do still feel that I got good value for money. Now inside the box, apart from the obvious, the sump guard, you will find a total of three brackets. One for the rear left hand side of the engine cradle, one for the rear right hand side of the engine cradle and one large one for the front of the engine cradle. You also get four fixing bolts to actually attach the sump plate two of those brackets and there should be four washers although I only got two. Now I know there's a lot of trepidation from people about the complexity of fitting this sump guard because it does seem rather more complicated than it needs to be. The problem is both exhaust pipes run along the bottom of that engine cradle and block access to a few fasteners that you need access to. So the whole job does seem a bit of a faff. But the reality is, it is a quite simple and straightforward operation. And you only have to do this once to get those brackets in place. Because in the future, whenever you need to remove this sump guard, it's just four simple bolts underneath, just like it is on the water cooled Triumphs you don't have to go through this whole rigmarole again. It's that old adage that we're used to hearing, if a job is worth doing, it's worth doing right. Extra time and effort at this stage in the initial fit will provide you with the means to fix this sump plate in a strong, sturdy manner that will give you years of genuine protection. Rather than skimping on the time and effort required for that initial fitting and ending up with something that doesn't really do the job. Now first things first, left hand side exhaust pipe. Remove the two nuts from the exhaust studs and then turn your attention to the exhaust mounting bracket that sits approximately halfway along the exhaust system. It's a bolt that goes into a captive nut, simply remove it and you're almost done. There's a, just a couple of precautions that you need to take. Take some string or a couple of cable tidies linked together and put them around your exhaust header and over the bracket for your left hand side horn. Don't pull it too tight because you need some movement. It's simply there so that when you finally release the exhaust system, the exhaust doesn't fall down and damage that O2 sensor. It just acts as a safety net. Then at the rear of your system, the final silencer mounting bracket, 
You'll need to put a spanner on the back of it because it's not captive. Unfasten it and then before removing the bolt, put something underneath to support the exhaust system. I just used a cardboard box and you've got access to the fasteners that you required access to. Now the instructions at this point tell you to repeat this process on the right hand side of the bike with the right hand side exhaust system. It's exactly the same except you're working on the right hand side and once you've removed it it will reveal a single fastener at the rear of the engine cradle and you're in a position to finally get started with actually fitting the sump guard. Now just going back to the left hand side for a moment remove those two fasteners and at the back of them there is a flat connecting plate with two captive nuts this is going to be replaced with one of the brackets out of the kit so you need to store this somewhere safe in case you want to return the bike to its normal configuration at a later date place this bracket on the back reinsert your bolts and snug them up but don't fasten them up too tight you need to still be able to move that bracket slightly in order to be able to adjust it to the optimum angle for fitting your sump plate. On the other side, the right hand side, there is just one fastener. Remove that, there's just a single nut on the back. Again, put that to one side and take the bracket with the single captive nut and attach that in place in the same manner as you did with the left hand side so that it's still slightly loose and capable of being moved. It's now time to put your front bracket on. Now, ordinarily you can leave the spacers or washers in place here but obviously last week i fitted those compact engine bars this being the case although with the engine bars you've got a set of slightly longer bolts if you leave those spacers in place there's not going to be enough thread to fit this bracket safely so i removed both of these and replaced them with two standard stainless steel one millimeter washers which provided me with enough thread to safely fasten this bracket in place again don't fasten the bracket up too tightly you are going to need a little bit of movement at this stage and you fasten that bracket in place with the holes with the two captive nuts at the top once you've done this it's time for the first test fit of your sump plate using the washers and the bolts provided insert all your bolts and screw them up hand tight this will have the effect of pressing all the brackets flat against the sump guard, effectively putting them in the position that they need to be in. At this stage, make any adjustments that you need to make to the angle of the front bracket. And you can do this quite simply by pushing or pulling the front of the sump guard until the right angle is achieved, making sure that you leave a respectable gap between the bracket and the oil filter. Once you've done this, you can then torque up the bolts at the rear of the engine cradle and these should be tightened up to 45 newton meters you may need to remove the sump guard again to talk up the fasteners for the front bracket and again they should be talked up to 45 newton meters if you have removed it put the sump plate back on once again check everything for alignment and all that's left to do is to replace your exhaust system it's simple and straightforward if you can take it off you can put it back on again your head and nuts should be tightened up to 15 newton meters and the middle and the silencer bolts both require tightening up to 22 newton meters i know taking exhausts off and refitting them is something that frightens people but really there's no need to be frightened of it it's just a total of four nuts and bolts on either side and if you take the precautions that i've suggested i don't think there's much can go wrong you now have a proper sump guard fitted something that can withstand and protect your bike from the day-to-day -day knocks, scrapes, bangs, and foreign objects thrown up by the front wheel. The sump guard itself is anodized brushed aluminium. Unfortunately, they don't do a black version, which I know a lot of people will want, but I do quite like the look of the clear version. It has a central rib pressed into the center of it, which gives this plate amazing rigidity. And combined with these heavy duty and well-finished brackets, I was actually really surprised just how strong it is. I would even go so far as to say it may be possible to jack the bike up without having to remove this sump guard. When it comes to oil change time, all you have is four bolts to undo and you've got access to your sump plug. You may need to just slightly loosen off that front bracket and pull it down to get proper access to the oil filter. But these are just things that you expect with any sump guard. I know that Royal Enfield have come in for a little bit of criticism about the way that this sump guard has to be fitted first time and in some respects 
collect i think what this comes down to is people want a quick easy fix but my personal view with something like this is you can't have both you can't have a guard that fits easy and quickly while still providing you with the adequate amount of protection it needs to be fastened in place properly the metal used in these oil filters is very thin as i discovered when i removed the old one and due to its position at the front of the bike it's very vulnerable if left unprotected there's no doubt about it there will be incidents of punctured oil filters this sump guard is the perfect fix it gives more than adequate protection from stone chips kicked up by the front wheel royal enfield haven't fallen into the trap of putting decorative holes in the front which basically negates all the good that the sump guard does I'm sure someone somewhere will eventually come up with a sump guard that improves upon this one. But no one's done it yet and as far as I'm concerned the RE sump guard represents the best on the market for the interceptor as it stands at the moment. Once again thanks for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have please leave a like and subscribe to this channel. I will be back on Friday I think I'm going to be doing a channel update so until then please ride safely and I'll see you soon.